Cozy Gigs and I'm doing my fourth video today. I'm doing a card that matches a card I did in my third video. Here it is. And you can see the similarities right away. I use the same set of stamps and the same materials. What's great about that is when you do get a set of stamps it's kind of nice to have some alternative cards you can make with the same set. It makes you feel like you got a lot of bang for your buck and there's lots of ideas you can use and you get the most out of your set of stamps. Here's a reminder about the set I'm using. It's called Jolly Follies here at the top. But if you turn it over where it has the item number, it's called Jolly Friends. So if you're in the Penny Black uh, site for ordering stamps or you're trying to get it from a retailer, you might want to use the item number here. 30-058 or search with this number and the Penny Black ink name and that'll help you find your set of stamps. Here's some more ideas on the back which is great. That's even more cards we can make using that set of stamps. And here's the set of stamps I've been using. I want to show you something I did. Here's the card and there is not a stamp on here that has four Christmas trees on it. We're going to use this one and we're going to mask and find out how to make a great background with just one stamp. And also here is this other piece right here and I want to tell you something I did that was perhaps hmm, a little different. I did something we don't usually do as stampers and might be a little bit naughty but um, you can see the picture behind here. I actually cut the stamp out. Here is a pile up of snow on the top which I think I could have kept. I'm going to peel this away. It might be a little hard to see but you're going to see right away that this part of the snow remained behind and I think I actually threw away this piece right here. Okay. So this is the piece I'm actually using. Let's take a look at our card. And there it is. There's no snow up here that's extra and no snow that built up here. Um, the reason I did this was because if I wanted to use the stamp in more applications um, here, I wasn't sure how I could add snow all the way around that would match the snow on here and that would match the snow here. I did try actually. I took this little piece that I cut out and I put the snow all around. And um, I didn't like how it looked so I decided to just take it off and I used some glue and some glitter to get the snow that's falling on the card right now. Okay so that was the first bad that I did. It's a little bit naughty. Okay let's take a look at the other one. This stamp comes with a little bird on top and I cut them apart. So here it is. No harm to the bird was committed. Here's the piece by itself and I did that again to be useful. I didn't want four trees with four little birds on top but of course I wanted my bird option so I stamped and masked with this one to get a good background and then I had my little bird who's all by himself. I used him as a little stamp and put him on the top of this tree and of course he fit per perfectly. And I just made sure I got a good line of sight between these two little eyeballs here. They're both looking at each other and it worked out great. So if you're brave, go ahead and do that. I think it makes this stamp set a little bit more useful and you can do more things with it. And plus, this is a fantastic Christmas tree. I think you could use this stamp in several of your Christmas cards or winter scenes or even not winter scenes. It's very useful. So once you take the bird off, you can use him or not use him and you could use this in an entirely different way on another card altogether. In order to get the trees to look as though they're part of a larger stamp, we're going to have to create a mask and in order to have the trees go around this focal point right here we're also going to have to create a mask of that stamp. And a mask is simply something that you cut out of tight paper, very thin, 
easily stamped over to use to protect the image that you've already stamped so that you could stamp around it without having multiple tree images go in the forefront of your image instead of the background of your image. So I'm going to cut these out. Uh, before I do, I wanted to point out this right here. I have some of the original snowflakes that are not quite cut away from me cutting the stamp out of a bigger image. I'm not going to worry about that because it's going to get hidden right here among the trees. Those are my dog's claws walking across the floor. <laughs> Okay, um, And of course, I'll be able to cut around the outline of the stamp and take away this image as well, so that we can get a little closer to the outline. So I was just being cautious. I didn't want to get too close to this and ruin the integrity of the stamp by cutting too closely. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. Here are the two masks that I've cut out. And you're actually going to need one more of these trees. And I wanted to show you a mask I'd used earlier because I want to discuss something else before we get started. You'll notice that I stamped these Christmas trees in black and at first I didn't do that. I decided to stamp them in green because why not? Um, they're trees after all. So I want to show you the first one I made. Here it is. And here are the stamps stamped in green. I don't know, um, of course you can stamp your stamps in green, but I think the reason I decided uh, finally to use black was because of the kind of candy stripe look that I have all together on this card. We're using like three sharp colors of white, black, and red. And so the black on the tree becomes one of the important colors of this card. And on this card, I'm stamping on a black background, I'll get rid of this. This card has a background of black cardstock. The other one we did had a background of red. So they're all going to be matching and they're all going to be drawing from the same pattern paper, a candy stripe look. But in this case, I didn't want to lose the emphasis of the black. It actually works in our favor, pulling all the aspects of the color in this card together. So let's go back to this. So we're going to be using two of these masks. And let's take a look. It looks like I cut fairly closely on this one. And the reason why was to make sure that when these were stamped closely together, they would overlap so the little branches from the original stamp uh, would cross over the top of this and blend with the next one. So I'm going to trim this a little closer and I'm going to get our cardstock piece ready so that we can stamp this background. So we know that this is the image that we want to keep in the forefront of our general picture. So that means we have to stamp that first and then protect it because we want everything else that we stamp to be in the background of our image. So let's take our stamp, stamp somewhere around here, leaving room for the tree on the right side as well as the edge of our card. Okay. And now let's cover it up with our mask. We want to keep our image pristine and we'll ink up our tree. Let's take a look at placement just before I stamp that. We want to make sure that this tree is right down by the edge of the pot because we want somewhere to go. We want a nice um, we want a nice structure to the way that we stamp all of these all at different levels with the goal and the goal is to make sure this this tree again is low enough it looks almost on the same level as the first one we stamped is low enough to put the bird on top with space around it and to make sure that we have room to show that they have eye contact 
So this tree needs to be quite low. And then the next tree will become the highest tree in this set. So now that we got that figured out, we'll ink up again. And we'll make sure that our trunk is beside the pot and not running over the edge of the white cardstock. So I feel pretty confident. I'm going to go ahead and stamp. Okay, and I'll take my mask off. So now we can see that because we protected the pot, it's looking beautiful and pristine. Let's cover it up again. And then let's take our tree mask and cover up the tree that we just stamped. And we want to do this because we don't want a merging of several branches. It'll make the image, the general overall image, too muddy to color and too muddy to discern the four trees. They'll just look a little bit um, too full and not enough of a clean image to focus our eyes on. So I've got those all set up. Now let's just remember that this one, we want to make our highest tree. Still want an edge at the top. Okay, now look at that. Let's look at that. See this piece right here? I don't think I want it right beside his nose. So that means this little piece right here has to come over enough to the right so it's not sticking up behind his nose. So I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen. feel pretty good about that placement, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp it. Okay, take my masks off, and let's see what happened. I'm going to lick my finger just a little bit and pull up my image. There we go. Okay, so Everything is pristine. I've got my two trees. It's not too muddy. Let's keep going. We want our other cre tree to come back down. We still need to protect our little pot and our little hedgehog. And now I have to mask this tree. You can see that little pieces of the tree are sticking out and that's fine. Looks like I stuck my finger there and got a little bit of black on there. No problem. Let's pick up. And now our next placement needs to come down, but not as low as the first tree we stamped. And of course, really, when it comes right down to it, it doesn't matter a whole lot. It's whatever you say it is. masks off. Okay, we've got three trees and a pristine pot still. Let's cover it one more time. Okay, so this last one is fairly important. We want to make sure that our little bird has plenty of room to sit atop a tree. So that's the only thing that we need to worry about. And perhaps, maybe just so that the placement of tree still has a nice white edge right here to make it even with the nice white edge on this side, but it's not critical. Let's cover up our third tree. So we've got our pot covered. We're probably not going to hit it, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Stamp our tree again. I want this to come down quite a bit. And maybe a good thing to look at would be to have it down as low as the first tree that we stamped. And that would be a good thought to think about when you're stamping. It seems to work pretty good, so let's do it. All right, there we go. Okay, that seemed to work out okay. Let's get rid of this mask. And we have everything lined up. Okay, so I think the next step is getting our little bird on top of the tree, and I'll show you that in a second. 
I have my bird ready to stamp and I'm keeping in mind now that I have a line of sight between my two friends on this card and cut my bird stamp. It's a good thing it's in black so we could figure out where to place them based on being able to look through this clear block. Remember that the little piece of tree, because we cut them off of a tree, is actually sitting here behind the bird. So you can kind of line that up with the tree itself. I'm going to tip the bird over to make sure it looks like he's looking at our little hedgehog and I'm going to stamp him out. Okay. So we're ready to color my favorite part. Everything is stamped out, everything is ready to go, and now we can just play. Here are the colors that I am using to color our image. I hate to spell out all the colors I'm using, um, just in case you don't have them and you feel like you have to get these exact colors. All you really have to do is decide what three colors are going to help you complete the pot and whatever color you would like to make the uh, the pot. And then I've used the same red and the same green on this image as I did in my previous card. This bright orange is going to be used for the beak and this dark umber is going to be used to highlight and darken and shadow some of my images. If you want everything exact, which I like too, I have made a PDF printout of all of the supplies that I used in these cards and you'll find them on my blog www.lizzygigs.blogspot.com and you can print that out for yourself and then you'll have exactly what I used. Also, uh, we're very close to opening our website which means that if you would like to purchase these you could do it on the website. You'll see everything that I used for each video and you'll be able to buy them right from the web website. But in the meantime, if you don't need that and you've got plenty of colored pencils, go ahead and match up the colors. I'll just hold them here for you as best as you can. And you may not even want those colors for your bird or your pot. That is all determined by whatever background papers that you used in the first place. Because matching them all up is, I think, what's going to make the difference between a card that looks all put together and one that leaves you wondering why you don't quite like that card as much as you think you should, if that makes sense. So I will go get my odorless paint thinner ready and my paper stumps and we'll color this together. I have my paper stumps all cleaned up. You can see they're pretty old and pretty used. Use them all the time. And then I just use a nail file to clean off the tips. And to, it's almost like using a pencil sharpener, except of course you can't. So you try to make a nice pointy tip for yourself with a nail file. And they're ready to go. And I've got my paint thinner here. It's odorless. The brand is Mona Lisa. And another common brand is called Gamsol. G-A-M-S-O-L. So whatever your local retailer has, or if you want to order it online. Okay, so I've got this ready to go. And the first thing I'm going to do is the very easiest thing is the trees. I'm just going to use one green, and it's just very simple and easy to do. So let's get started with that. All I'm doing with my tree is running my pencil along the lines very quickly. I'm not even trying that hard to be perfect because we know that we're going to blend them anyway. So in general I'm just covering them up quickly and efficiently so that this part of the process doesn't take too long. I'm going to leave this stump for some brown and keep going really quick. The side I'm not going to bother using brown over here on this tree because then I would have to try to keep the color separate and I don't want to even bother that much. I just want some nice green trees that look like they have individual branches. So I'm going to finish the rest of my image and then come back to you when all of this has been done. You can see it goes pretty quick 
won't take you any time at all. So I just lost some of the taping I just did. So I have already got my one of my little trees done here and I want to show you how I did it so that I don't stamp it all over again. But you can see actually the difference between these two things. I've dipped my paper stump in my paint thinner and now I'm kind of sweeping out from the center of a branch in the direction of the pine needle. It's not that delicate and it's not that complicated. I'm going to be careful as I get close to the face of my hedgehog and I'm definitely being careful when I'm close to my pot because I want to make sure that my pot stands out in the very forefront. Okay, and look how fast I can go. I'm just kind of pushing my paper stump out from the branch. So even though I'm not focusing terribly much on individual pine needles, it gives the impression somewhat that I am. And that's all we need is a general impression. Okay, so that was really quick. You can see how fast that was. Um, anything that's overly white here, I'll just fuzz out just a bit. Very easy. I'll do the rest and then I'll come back. I'm just finishing off my coloring and I wanted to show you something before I did it. Let's take a look at the complete picture. This is looking good and it's really easy to do. We've got some light and dark shades simply because of where the colored pencil stroke was and the fact that we didn't hang around on the stroke too much pulling out the pigment. So there's some nice variations in color as well as that background black that I wanted to have show. Remember you don't have to stamp this in black and you don't have to do this step with the colored pencil at all if you'd rather just stamp in a green color to begin with. So let's take a look over here where there's quite a bit of white showing right here in the branches. So I don't want there to be that much white and yet I don't really want to fuzz it out too much so I'm just going to carefully tone down the white and give the impression of background trees. I don't necessarily want to color in and darken too much the trees here. We just want to tone the white down. So that looks good. I didn't turn everything dark green. I kept the changes in color and the variations of green on this piece of paper without taking it all away and just fuzzing it all out. Otherwise there wouldn't be any point in kind of individually brushing out the pigment for every stroke. You could just take your paper stump and go like that. So we don't want to do that. So you can see there's just little bits here that are perhaps a little too strongly white and would look a little better if we just toned down the white altogether. Okay, so this is looking good. Now I want to do one more thing that I couldn't help noticing. Right here, for some reason, I have a huge blob of black, which I think is really unattractive. So I'm going to take some black paper, and I'm going to take one of my white pens, let's see which one is showing really white today, sometimes, oh this one is doing a really good job, so sometimes just depending, I sometimes feel like these white pens have a mind of their own, but um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stroke out some of this black. And we know we can't take it off altogether, and that's okay. We don't really need to. We just need to tone it down. So toning it down would really help. Once I have this toned down, what I'll do is I'll go back and add a little green to that. Because I've introduced, I've almost introduced gray to this picture now, and I didn't want to do that either. This is getting really picky. I'm just going to give a white base to this and then I'll come back with a bit of green and add green to this because green is our acceptable color. This is what we're having in this area. We're not, this will stick out like a sore thumb because it actually looks a bit gray right now. So we just reduced how much black there was. We kept this little stem right here and then the next thing I do is once I know for sure this is dry is I'll add a little bit of green 
from my paper stump to this and even it out. That's tremendously picky, but sometimes when you bend your head over and you work really hard on a tiny piece of artwork, you get all caught up in the details and I'm afraid I'm one of those people. I think most garden makers are. Okay, these are the three colors that I'm going to use to color my pot. You can see where they are on the pot that I've already completed. I've got a lighter kind of, it's not terracotta, it's like almost yellowy, burnt yellow, a darker one, and then a brown that really suits the other two colors to give it a sharp edge and to make it look as though the pot is actually round. Um, I'm not paying too much attention to lighting per se, not really, not in this instant. It's, I don't think it's that necessarily necessary, but I do want the shine of the pot to show. And you can see that that is almost white. And if you don't have that contrast between what is dark and what is light, the effect won't be as good. So we're going to do this part right now. I'm going to add quite a bit of pigment. On our lighter colors, you need more color simply because it doesn't go as far as a darker color. A darker color, you have to start being careful. As soon as I add the brown to this mixture, that's the one I'm going to have to be careful of the most because I could pull that all the way across the white piece and lose all of my white space altogether, and I don't want to do that. So you can see that I've deliberately created white space in the middle. Take my paper stump. Right now I'm just spreading the pigment around. At some point I'm going to have to stroke out so that I have more of a stroke going towards the center that's directional rather than just circles that I'm using right now to spread the pigment around. And it'll make a difference too. So I feel like my pigment is spread around quite a bit. Feel my stump getting dry, so now I'm going to take my pencil and just stroke out lightly in the direction of the shine of the pot. It's pretty minute and really doesn't take any time at all. Remember that this is your lightest color, so this color is the one that's going to come in the most. So you can see I've worked my color down to right here. I don't want to keep it up here. That's not where it's going to count. My darkest colors are going to be here, and my lightest colors are going to be close, close to the shine. So you can see I've kind of made my shine now, my light on the curve of this pot. Didn't take long at all. And again, um, when I do cards, I love using colored pencils, and I love using effects and light, but it's almost, um, it can't supersede my desire to just make a great card for fun. So I try not to get too wrapped up in the details. Here's my darker burnt yellow. I'm actually using less than my light color simply because it's darker and I don't need to use as much. I'm going to pull it up or pull it down about halfway up. I like to blow my debris off. If you rub the debris of your colored pencil off, you can grab it with your hand and streak it across the white of your page. So it's smarter to just blow off any breaks from your pencil rather than scrape your hand across it and risk making your white paper not white anymore. Got my stump. Now this time, instead of spreading around with little circles, I'm going to try to leave the majority of my color around the outside and then smooth it out but very carefully pull my darker color 
into my lighter color. And the reason why I'm being so careful is I could easily make my light yellow too dark simply by pushing the pigment and covering up everything I worked hard for in order to keep this light. So I, I want to stay away from the light parts I already did, so I'm being quite careful. I only want it darker about halfway between here and here and here. Just up about halfway. Don't take away all your light color by covering it with the dark color. Okay? That was really easy. Let's take our lighter brown. Okay, look how much I'm not putting down. You can always add more. It's harder to add less. Right? You can take a, an eraser to any mistakes you make, but it's never going to be as easy as just being cautious in the first place. I know I'm going to have quite a bit of color right here, so I'm just adding it. I also know that the rim of my pot, I want it to be darker altogether, so I'm straight out just coloring it. There's quite a bit of shadow down here. Probably could have used a darker shade right under his chin, so I'm going to make sure I have that right now. We know that this pot has a different size between here and here, so I'm just going to make it a little darker right there. A bit darker right there. Okay, let's start with that. We're going to cautiously, I've got a clean stump, because I might need to add more color later with this stump, so I don't want to get it dirty with brown. I'm going to keep it clean. Let's we might as well do this part because we know we don't have to be too cautious. We are going to be adding a darker brown to that. So again, I'm being pretty cautious here. We know that this brown is going to spread around a lot. We want to keep our three shades. We want them to be blended, but we want it, them to definitely show a difference. We don't want to take all the differences away. Okay, so now I couldn't pull it all the way out. I could see that I had a lot of pigment there and I wanted to be cautious. So it's not as blended here as it could be. And I'm just going to leave that for now and deal with that when I have a clean stump. My blending isn't going as well because I can feel that I have a wax buildup underneath caused by putting layers of colored pencil on top of each other. So um, the paint thinner is breaking down the wax and allowing me to spread out the color, but it's building up a little bit right here. So I'm going to have to use some paint thinner to get rid of some of my extra wax. So I've dumped it in again, getting rid of some of my color. Getting my paint thinner, and now I'm going to use that paint thinner. You can see I've taken away a lot of pigment just by doing that. But I've got a wax build up here that I need to get rid of. It'll blend much better if the wax isn't there. And now I can take this and spread it out a little more and blend it in with my other color. Otherwise, it's just going to kind of sit on the top there. Okay, I've got some work to do. But before I do that, I'm going to take my darker brown, go in here, go in here, I have to use very little here because you know that this is going to get drawn out quite a bit. We'll spread this around and see what we get. And you tone down the white without losing all the white. We use some tiny little flicks to spread this out. 
try to keep all my other colors intact. Well, let me just stress that this is not a tutorial on coloring perfectly. That would be uh, another video you might want to watch, not by me. <laughs> There's lots of great videos out there. We're so lucky to have the internet now. Okay. So you can see all of my colors are there, and they're looking pretty good. But I'm going to have to work it just a bit to make it the way I want it. I'm going to do something. I'm going to take the stump that I have. It's got several colors on it. And I'm going to very carefully tone down my white. Not a lot. I want it to be there. I just don't want it to be a startling white. I want it to be a white that caught some light and cast a shadow. I'm spending a fair amount of time breaking down some of the seams that developed between all the colors. Okay, I'm really liking that. And before I add more color and I got a lot of pigment down, I'm going to do something about getting on the outside of those lines, which I didn't want. I'm cleaning off my eraser first so they don't spread an unexpected color down. And I'm just going to work off a place where I let my paper stump go outside of the line. So be careful here because I could grab some of this green by accident and streak it all the way down the side here. So we're trying to avoid that. Just carefully get that off. Okay, I'm liking that. I need some more dark brown here. Definitely want it to be darker. I'm trying to imagine what it looks like to you to have me painstakingly color some of this forever on a video. But I do know that when I do teach classes, it's kind of nice to see what happens to make something look the way you want it to look. It's a trouble finding my stump here. Here it is. So you can always fast forward it if this is an easy part for you and you don't really need to see all this detail. And if you find colored pencils and shading just a little bit confusing, this would be a good time to just do it with me and watch. And replicate a card, which is how we all get started. We just do what somebody else did until we get the hang of it, and then we step out on our own to do something that we really enjoy. Sometimes I find that people who work many hours in a day just and want to do some artwork when they get home really just need a kit and some cards they already know the answer to, they already have everything they need to get started, and then spend the spare time they have making the card instead of using their very precious spare time just to find the right supplies and get everything together and then design a card for themselves. And what they were really looking for is just a way to relax before they had to do everything else they needed to do. Okay, I'm really liking that. I could stand to be even dark around the edges, and I have lost some of my colors going up the side. I can fuss with this quite a bit. Just going to add a little bit of color here. Make sure that I have the correct paper stump. And I have to be careful again not to quite cover up my light. Nope. 
I mangled it a bit by putting some color there. That's good. Let's take our eraser. Get rid of some of that. I'm a little worried about brushing color across my page, so I'm going to get a fluffy brush. Get rid of it that way. I think I'm getting to the point of enough fussing already, but honestly I could fuss and fuss with this for a long time simply because that's what I like to do until I get it just the way I like it. I think that's good. <laughs> I'm gonna stop already. I'll just keep messing around with this. So we're done. This pot, it's standing out. It's jumping up from our trees, which is what we wanted. We've got some roundness to it. I think that's great. I'm gonna work on this tiny little present here next. We're gonna work with red and green. They're both really strong colors. Um, probably it would be smarter to do the red first simply because if we made any mistakes with it, we could cover it up with the green. I'm going to sharpen my green pencil a little bit. Okay. So, so let's think about this a little bit. We want probably a nice dark band of red right here in the center. And then we'll start with some extra color on the actual fold of the bow. No, it's such a tiny detail for this. We'll make it dark red here. And let's stop there and work at that. Okay, first of all, we'll try to keep the center part of the bow nice and dark. And we'll just pull out to the side for where we expect the fold to be going for the bow. Doesn't take much, but that detail really does help. And I'm going to pull up from the bottom. So I've got some lighter shade going around the side, but get just a little bit darker here. Make sure this is nice and dark. I think I'll go around the outside of the bow just to make it look red. But I will keep all that shading in there. Bow's done. Let's do the Christmas package. More color around the bottom. It's going to tend to be darker. Make it really dark right underneath the bow. That helps define the bow and it helps us define the shading or the uh, shape of our package. 
I've got my paper stump that I was using for the trees. I'm going to be oh so careful here because it's so tiny. And I want it to have dark and light spaces. Um, and it seems so detailed, but honestly, if you were just doing this without me yakking at you all the time, you'd be done fairly quickly. Okay, that's it. That's it with our pack, with our little package. Let's take a look at this little guy. We've got some red cheeks going on. I want to get a little scrap paper right here. Find our red stump. Okay, here's our red stump. It's got plenty of red on it. Let's get some paint thinner on it and test it out over here on our white. That's a lot of color. So I'm very cautiously put that color right here and I work our way from the center out. Very, very, very light so I can maintain as much control over that as possible. It's very hard to get rid of the red once it's on there. I like that. That's looking pretty good. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of dark to his hair, which you can barely see. And then I'm going to take one of my favorite pens, which is a black glaze Sakura pen. Um, you can use a glaze or a black jelly roll. Just get it working here first. And again, it's one of those magical, does it work great today? And I'm practicing making little tiny noses that I hope have lots of ink and lots of shine on them. And I'm going to work the ball until I get what I want. Okay, so see all the little noses I'm making? From where I'm looking, I can see that they're starting to look very wet and will give us that glaze look, which is what the pen's named after. Some people, uh, the reason why I'm doing this on camera is because, so you don't give up on your black pens. You just have to work them a bit, get all the debris off the edge, make sure the ball is rolling really well and is really wet and now it's getting to the point where I can see I'm going to have a nice shiny nose because that's all you get is that one little piece that makes all the difference in the world. My little shiny nose. I want it wetter. Oop, now we've really got it working well. There we go. And my little eye. I'm not going to do the eyebrow because this pen is just too thick. I think I'll take a little black micro tip and do that eyebrow instead. Okay, I've got my tiny little eye and my tiny little nose. There. All right. Such a small thing makes such a big difference. Let's get our little bird done. I'm going to go like this. You can see our original bird. I'm going to stay away from that nose and let it dry. Okay. So I'm not going to bother with too many shades on my little bird. I do want some contrasting colors, and we definitely have that, but I think I can just get that with the one color and the use of the paint thinner. I'm going to make sure my wing is plenty dark so it stands out from the rest of the body. A little color here, a little color here, and stay well away from everything else. Make sure I've got the correct paper stump. Do my wing first. Pull just a little bit of color. And I think I'm going to pull this way so I have strands of color coming this way. I'm going to 
to keep that white at the tail. I want this to be just a little bit darker right here. But I don't want to muddy the waters too much because I really want that wing to stick out. That's good enough on that. Get my nice bright orange and just add a little bit of color here. And that is pretty bright. I'm not going to use this bright color on the belly. I'm going to use my darker yellow orange on the body. And again, I'll put the color here and then I'll pull up from that center. All right. I'm not quite sure how dirty this stump is. Just going to be cautious and make sure that's all I've got on here. Pull out from the side and work my way up. I'm going to soften this just a bit so it's not quite as stark. Okay, take my brown, work this just a little bit more. Okay, there's our little guy. All right, now we've got that same desire for a nice black eye. Make sure our pen is running really, really well. And it's got that glaze effect happening. Okay, that looks really good. I'm going to apply it to the eye here. Okay, that worked out well. And then my micro tip, which I think I could use a new one, so. Okay, it's running well. And I'm just going to add a little darkness to this. I don't, I like it when it's dark and not gray because I wasn't stamping well or because I didn't get a good stamp. That definition helps a lot. Put a little tail feather in there if you want. Maybe you could do a little bit on the wing too. It's kind of fun. All right. Now we've got this little gray piece right here. It's fully dry. I've got my green paper stump with not a lot of green on it. Let's add a bunch of green here, pick up on some of it. Because you can't roll this around too much, what's going to happen is you'll pick up the white that you put in there in the first place. You don't want to do that, so we just want to cover it up really carefully. Not fuss too much. Okay, so our piece is done, except maybe this down here. We'll have a little green showing through the stump, showing through the snow, and we'll add a bit of trunk with our brown. I don't even think I'll bother uh, taking the stump out for that one. I'll just add a bit right here. And I think we're done. So the next step would be, let's put the glitter on. Add our glitter for the snowflakes. There we go. And I'll add that right now. I have my fine tip art glitter glue, any glue that you have, and made sure that it's running. Clean my tip off. Now I'm going to dot the whole surface of my card with little 3D dots of glue to make my snow. I'm going to run it along the edges of any hilly bits that we have to indicate that there's snow on the ground and maybe I'll run it along the bottom edge of here as well. Up here a bit, maybe here. I have my ruby red liquid pearls here. I'm going to make sure that it's running. Nope, not running. So I'm going to take 
a paper clip to this. I have a paper clip here and I'm just going to show you what I do to get something like stickles or glue or liquid pearls running again. A paper clip is the perfect size to get in here and actually this little bump makes it even better. You get the little bump in there. Turn it around a few times and then your glue should be working just fine again. Okay, so just practice a little bit. Make sure you're getting tiny little decorations, little tiny balls of red. And then go ahead and decorate your tree with little Christmas balls. I've added all my little red ornaments to this card. Let's take a look at my finished piece. I'm going to turn it sideways and you can see where I added foam mounting underneath the pattern piece of paper. And then I couldn't resist using some of these larger self-adhesive pearls so I added those to the corner to just pull it together. And I was thinking about adding a big snowflake right here and one right here but I just found that I really liked how simple this was so I just left it the way it was. Here's a look at the inside of the finished card. I just carried on the same thing. I used very small pearls, adhesive pearls to put on the inside so I wouldn't create bulk. And I used even smaller portions of the liquid pearls for the same reason, just to keep the bulk of the card down. I kind of like the simplicity of the inside of the card and if I had a big huge greeting right here, I would consider this for a nice alternative to the outside of my card. I really like it. The simplicity is great. Let's take a look at the outside again and the inside. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time.